right now the trainees are conducting uh, rifle marksmanship period nine, which is group and zero. Uh, yeah, we're doing short range marksmanship, uh, which is, uh, this training's been very successful so far. Uh, everyone who's come Warfare here Warfare is, is like a game where people try to be smarter and better than each other. When armies fight, they always want something that makes them better. But sometimes, they use weapons that are a bit like cheating. Imagine guns that are so good, it feels like playing a game with cheat codes. Soldiers have rifles that don't make noise, shotguns that clear the battlefield with just one shot, and machine guns that shoot a crazy amount of bullets. In the past, there were many guns that gave armies an unfair advantage. Were these weapons smart ideas or just sneaky tricks? Let's find out. Number 1. From Robin Hood to Church Outrage, The Crossbow's Paradox Move over, Robin Hood. Back in the 12th century, Pope Innocent Ia didn't like crossbows. He declared them hateful to God and banned their use against Christians. Why the holy disapproval? Unlike longbows, crossbows don't require years of practice to master. Anyone could pick one up and become a deadly sharpshooter. Also, their bolts could go through even the toughest knightly armor, making them a big problem for well-protected soldiers. Despite the church's protests, crossbows remained popular for centuries because they were strong, easy, and a big deal in battles until guns became popular. Number 2. The Uzi. From tiny terror to pop culture icon. Slamming forward, you would think it would be hard to hit anything. Fast forward to the mid-20th century. The newly formed state needed a small, reliable gun that was easy to carry. That's when the Uzi submachine gun came into play. Created by Uziel Gao, this little gun was perfect for city fights. It was small enough to go through tight spaces, shot a lot of bullets really quickly, and was simple to use, making it great for training new soldiers or special teams like SWAT. But here's the catch. Because the Uzi was so easy to make, lots of cheap copies flooded the market. That made it a favorite for criminals and terrorists. Even though some armies and police still use the Uzi, it's now more known for being used in gang fights and in heroic battles. Sadly, its connection to violence has taken away from its original purpose as a tool for defense. Number 3. Trench Brooms Shells Hawking Surprise Say that they are no faster with slam fire than they are with a regular pump shotgun and that Just imagine you're stuck in a muddy trench during World War I, bullets flying everywhere. Suddenly, American soldiers storm in, not with rifles but with shotguns, the terrifying trench brooms, officially known as the Winchester Model 1897. These weapons were devastating up close. Explain some of the history behind this weapon um, as it is pertinent to the design in the- Packed with a lot of gunpowder, one shot could spray an entire enemy position. Talk about a nasty surprise. The Germans weren't happy. They said shotguns broke the rules of the Hague Conventions, which banned really cruel weapons. They even threatened to shoot captured Americans with shotguns, calling them unlawful combatants. The Americans argued that shotguns were just another tool, no scarier than rifles or machine guns. In the end, the trench brooms became a symbol of American cleverness, even if they did leave everyone a bit shaken. Number 4. The Gatling Gun The Harbinger of Industrial Warfare Scientific War it was the first time that societies had taken all of their resources of science and During the American Civil War, a game-changing weapon emerged, the Gatling gun. Created by Richard Jordan Gatling, this wasn't your typical single-shot rifle. This beast was a hand-cranked machine gun with multiple barrels that spun around like a deadly pinwheel. What made the Gatling gun particularly contentious was its unprecedented capabilities. It could shoot hundreds of rounds per minute, mowing down enemy lines like a farmer harvesting wheat. This marked a stark departure from conventional weaponry, signaling a shift towards mass firepower and fundamentally changing the nature of warfare. The Gatling gun marked the start of industrial warfare, Armaments you see in World War I had been used before, where victory relied on showering the enemy with more bullets than they could handle. The legacy of the Gatling gun is complicated. Some saw it as a way to end wars quickly, by making them too terrifying. Others viewed it as a tool for harsh suppression, efficiently crushing rebellions with brutal force. Number 5. The Silent Assassin, the Gardoni Air Rifle. Air rifle. It's the sort of thing a child learns how to shoot with in the back. Imagine a gun that fired silently, 
with no smoke to give away your position. That was the 18th century Gardoni air rifle, a marvel of engineering for its time. Invented by Bartolomeo Gardoni, it was like a futuristic whisper compared to the heavy weapons of the era. What made this silent assassin so controversial? Firstly, its clandestine nature made it a perfect tool for covert operations or taking down enemy leaders without anyone knowing what hit them. Moreover, in a period where muskets required tedious reload times between shots, the Gardoni air rifle stood out with its ability to unleash multiple shots rapidly, altering the tactical landscape. However, this shadowy shooter wasn't perfect. It was complex and prone to breakdowns, and refilling the air chamber took forever. Despite its limitations, the Gardoni air rifle was a glimpse into the future of silent, rapid-fire weapons, proving that innovation isn't always smooth sailing. Number 6. The Tommy Dunn, the infamous Chicago typewriter. Look at what is probably one of the most iconic-looking and recognizable firearms of all time. Another iconic weapon, the Thompson submachine gun, also made its debut in World War I. Nicknamed the Tommy Dunn by American soldiers, it was designed for the brutal realities of trench warfare. Here's why it became so famous, compact and deadly. Unlike rifles, the Tommy gun was small and easy to handle on the cramped battlefield. High rate of fire, just like the Gatling gun, it could unleash a hail of bullets, making it perfect for close quarters combat. Cool projects like this. Now something like this, obviously, yeah, like we were mentioning. But fame can be a double-edged sword. After the war, the Tommy gun's firepower made it a favorite among gangsters in the Roaring Twenties of the United States. Its iconic drum magazine and nickname, the Chicago Typewriter, became synonymous with gangland violence. The association with criminals stuck with the Tommy gun, overshadowing its role as a weapon of war. That was a wild ride through history's weapon cabinet. We saw weapons that changed the game, weapons that caused outrage, and weapons that blurred the lines of fairness. But here's the thing, war is all about pushing for an advantage. These dirty weapons pushed those boundaries, sparking debates about what's okay and what's not. While some innovations revolutionized combat, others made people question the cost of victory. The question we're still left with is this, how far is too far in the fight to win? This isn't just a history lesson, guys. Join the conversation online, share your thoughts on these crazy weapons and what you think makes war fair or unfair. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, then share your thoughts in the comments and also share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.